Get Heavy Podcast, hosted by Craig Kasamas and John Scheimer. Oh. Um, well, anyway, I just wanted to have you on, man. Uh, and and just, you know, t- obviously you're, you're well-versed in politics and stuff like that. Um, you know, but I wanted to talk about, you know, obviously some of your music stuff that you're doing sounds pretty interesting, you know. Um, it really, there's no John, I, I'm agenda. Like- I'm like you, John. Um, do you go by John or Jonathan? John. Okay. My full name is Jonathan. Like, you know, officially it's Jonathan. Like, you know, on all my apps, it's Jonathan. So no one knows that I'm bringing them their food nowadays, you know? <laughs> I was like, I was like, I've had a few people like, like they look at me and I'm like, I, like, I'm always like, well, if like they see my picture and see that it's John delivering them food, like, I don't want to deliver. I don't want someone popping out and saying hello to me. <laughs> yeah, I, I was in 2016. I had this gig, and I actually feel great about what I'm going to tell you guys right now. Um, I had this really good paying gig, and the people that I was working for wanted me to do something that would have increased my income, but it it was a total violation of integrity. Like I would have had to go to a large base of people and lie to them about how good what what they were doing was when right. it wasn't you know like tell them this is in your best interest and it, and it wasn't um and so i told them to fuck off right and i so i became an uber driver for about eight months <laughs> you know yeah. but but i but i i i was uber driving with my fucking integrity <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> I've never regretted it, and I look back on it as a, one of my proudest moments, man. I, yeah. I'm yeah. delighted I did it. Um, but I, I know what you're talking about. I had a couple of times I picked people up. I was like, oh fuck, I know this person. And, yeah, 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 yeah. You're like, you're like, you're like, look, I don't want to explain my whole fucking life story. Right. I'm fucking uh-huh. Uber driving right now. Like, look, I'm fucking Uber driving. I'm paying the bills, goddammit. it. Yeah. Ain't no one fucking borrowing money, you know. Come on. Now it's like you're I'm at a mad. mask at their in a mask at their front door. You know what I mean? You're like, no, nah, yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to do this at all. As the bet now, I'm like, yeah. I mean, yeah. like, I don't know why I have like this, like, uh, inc- I don't know. I guess just like it's my own anxiety of just like, oh, you know. But like, I love masks. I love masks now. Masks are the best. I was, just, like, telling, I was just telling my wife today. There's a lot of stuff. But from now on, I'm always going to wear a mask when I do it. When I go on a yeah. plane, hell yes. Think about it. Think about how flu and the, and the colds and the shit yeah. you're cycling there. And there's yeah. a, the Asians have been doing it for a long time. They don't. Yeah. They don't have crowds, you know? And it's funny because if you ask if you ask the if you ask the Asian culture why they do it, it's not to get sick from someone else. They do it when they don't feel they when they feel they're a little ill. They're like. Them. I got a little, I got a little cough. I got a little cough. I'm going to fucking put on a mask and go right. out. Cause I'm not Protect an asshole. People. Cause yeah, well, no, we don't do that shit in America, man. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. Tell me yeah. I got to wear a mask. I've it said it before, be but asked. it it's so uniquely American to not give a fuck until it happens to you. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, I, I have friends that I work with. So inter- my song division, it's an international company. So we have, we have a team in Singapore, we have a team in London, we have a team in, in Australia. The, my friends around the world are just like, what the hell is wrong with you people? What? Yeah. You know, Yo, what do you mean, you people? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I, I just say, you know, I I like I, I have no explanation for you. I don't I don't I don't know. I don't know. It's why. one of those things where it's I, I feel that like now like if we we've been living a life of like check marks where it's like everyone was just when it got within that hundred days of the election everyone kind of was just like you know what I'm just gonna wait and see what the fucking election what happens at the election what happens at the election what happens at the election and then it's like now that the elections happened you know your response to things knowing that okay we're now we're 60 some odd days away from a fucking inauguration mm-hmm. you know like where like now na- like, like i feel now it's like you don't really have to explain yourself as much because it's almost like this this era of it is almost over you know and it'll kind of explain itself yeah yeah, yeah. um do you guys think that how do you think do you think our kids 
will remember this as a time when they had to that, that, that defined them as strong to get through this uh yeah 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 i mean I as, as so. i was a kid when the uh bush uh what was it bush uh gore elections were going on and i remember no, and please. you know i was like 18 i was I, it was the first election i could vote in you know what I mean? my kids are a little younger john's kids are a little younger but it was fucking important to me dude and it and it really boosted my mind into politics so i kind of keep that same thing in mind my kids at 12 and 10 years old know more about politics than i ever did <laughs> in my life you know what i mean at that age well craig craig i, I meant i was referring to the pandemic oh yeah. i'm sorry i thought you're talking about the election no no that, but that's that's equal i mean they, they kind of go hand in hand i mean i'm telling yeah. you sadly sadly they do yeah i don't think we would have well, i don't know but but, but I, I just i i wonder if that'll be like what defines our kids but my kids well, are, i mean uh my uh what uh my my oldest kid he calls his him and his friends the quarantines mm -hmm. so you know yeah. i think yeah. it's definitely going to be a thing i think this is something oh, yeah. that's going to last just because i mean we're going another six months at least of kind of living somewhat like this mm -hmm. you know what i mean before it's like people start to feel safe and it's like and the thing is like it's not even going to be a thing of like getting a vaccine to everyone. It's going to be more of a thing of like being able to get a vaccine to the people that want it. Cause I don't even think that everybody's going to want it. No, there's you know? so much mistrust and, and you know, um, and I mean, I'm not, I'm not a person like, like I don't get the flu shot. I don't mean, get, I, I don't well, get the flu. Either. I've never gotten the flu shot. I don't fucking go get shots. I'm not that fucking person, but hopefully when everything is uh, more available, which will be like at least six months. I think it's going to be yeah. at least six months. So I mean, they're I mean, talking about what point. April rollout, right? I mean, they're talking about an April rollout, maybe. I mean, and, I mean? and I'll point. tell you what, as, as much as like, you know, I don't buy into the RNA, you know, tweaking your DNA and, you know, all the crazy conspiracy shit that's going on, but I don't think I'm going to be jumping first in line, dude, for that first oh, round. You know what I mean? Like, no, let me well, no. step back and wait a little bit and see what, make sure people aren't turning into fucking actual zombies. You know what I mean? Well, and the thing you is, know, not that it's yeah. going to do that, but you know, just, yeah, I, know, buy I don't Apple know, man. Products. I buy Apple products, so I've learned let the first batch have somebody else test it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. It's yeah, the same exactly. thing with the PS5 out right now and the Xbox, yeah. whatever that just came out. They're all exactly. crashing and fucking catching on fire and shit. Everyone's like, "Whoa," you know. When they used to have new uh, iPhones coming out, I'd see see people lined up to get them. I'd go, "Good, good for you. Suckers, you get yeah. in there, and test it out for me. Mm, let me know how it is in about six weeks." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's weird. I mean, it's it, the pandemic with the kids, man, is just, it's just been the roughest. I mean, my daughter is in seventh grade and I, I remember that my kid, you know, in that age, dude, your friends are the most important things in the yeah. world. And she hasn't seen hardly one friend in eight months, dude. You know what I mean? Like some of her friends, parents are very paranoid about it and they're just, it's that's not going mean. to happen. You know, it's, it's brutal, dude. It's like their World War Two, you know what I mean? Like, oh, mm -hmm. totally. They had to hunker down in bunkers for out of out of fear. I mean, this is what is motivating us to do this is fear for our safety. Mm -hmm. It's no different if Stukas were going to fly over and you know fucking bomb us. Yeah. Um, it it is it is a we are afraid of what's out there to some extent, and yeah. I think that's going to define this generation a little bit. Yeah, I think so, man. I mean, because my wife's a teacher in Oxnard, right? And um you know, it's always low, low, low poverty, you know what I mean? Like a lot of poor areas. She teaches at Elm and, you know, some schools in deep Oxnard, right? And some of those kids haven't left the house in eight months. Literally have like gone outside and that's it. That is, they haven't, you know what I mean? And she's shot, you know, and we're like me and John, our families hang, you know what I mean? And we got our little pod that we do. But we yeah. get out, we go on bike rides, we go on a hike, we try to find something to do outside. You know what I mean? We'll go to dinner every once in a while we can. We're trying to keep like some sort of things, but some kids are absolutely just done. I mean, they haven't left the house, dude. Like, yeah. you know, not one time. I took my daughter to, to New York City last month. Wow. Oh, nice. How I've was that? 
It was great. We we were we were in Harlem. We were standing on the corner of 140th Street in Amsterdam when uh, they called it for Joe Biden on that Saturday morning. Wow! Oh, tell right. give us the, tell us what that was like. You were there for you know, the party, huh? So we were we had, and this was this was right before COVID started up ticking again. Like at that time, New York was doing a great job. There was very low new incidents, and to go to get on that plane, or I'm sorry, to get off the plane. We had to show them a negative test that was done within two days. Oh, so wow. We, we went on a Thursday and got tested, got our results Friday evening, left Saturday morning. You know, so we knew that we were pretty safe and New York was doing pretty good at the time. I, I, don't, I wouldn't do that now. But no. so we, we got there. We got an Airbnb. I had a, a buddy come in from, uh, from over here, lived over in Jersey, came over to see us. And um, he was going to drive us around the city. And he locked us. He, he, his battery died. They didn't lock his keys. battery did. So we were waiting for a guy to come and jumpstart his car at about 11 o'clock in the morning, sitting on a stoop in Harlem, talking, having a good time. And we start hearing honking and people pounding on pans. You know, like, um, and then I walked up to the corner and look up, and there's just people hanging out of their windows and screaming and driving by and going crazy. And then that evening, uh, we were down, I, I was down near Times Square. I didn't go into Times Square because it was super yeah. crowded and I'm not yeah, comfortable with that. But, yeah, but, um, but uh, it was a party, you know? And then the next day, I went into Brooklyn and there were just motorcades driving around with Biden posters. Like, and I think it's, it's very telling. It's very telling that in the hometown of that, that's where he's from. Yeah. You know, I asked the guy, I was there in 2018, I was talking to a guy who's a former fireman and he said, uh, he, he he dropped this stat on me. He said, yeah, uh, Trump got about 27% of the vote in Manhattan. And I said, why do you think that is? And he goes, we know him. We know what he is. He's not a billionaire. He's a cheap hustler. He's a three-card money dealer, man. Yeah. He's a slumlord. Um, and, you know, yeah. that's. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, it's so funny because you talk to people that have been in those circles. You hear, you know, I listen to a lot of podcasts, and there's people that kind of know him you know, from the New York era that talk about it. And it's like, he's a fucking running joke. He's been a running joke for 20 years. You know what I mean? And like, you know, he's, yeah, he had a show and all that, but you know, he's equivalent of a, you know, I even, even calling him a Kardashians, like an insult to Kardashians. You know what I mean? He's, he is a, you know, a fucking, he's a shyster dude, you know? But Craig, that show is what convinced approximately 40 to 60 million Americans that he was this tough, no nonsense boss. Yeah. It was a fucking creation. It was a Hollywood creation. Oh yeah. But that being people's, you know, I'll never forget when my kids, when we first moved here, my kids went to a little school up in Santa Barbara called Waldorf and, um, way more expensive than I could afford. And, um, uh, we became friends with a woman who has been on general hospital for many, many years. And she told me a story about when she was pregnant. Actually, her husband told me the story. When she was pregnant, they would, on several occasions, they'd be in an elevator or they'd be somewhere, and people would come up to her and they'd recognize her and say, oh, my God, is that Dimitri's baby? And Dimitri played her love interest on the show. Like, <laughs> they don't know it's not real. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's just disconnect. If you're in someone's living room every week, after a while they start to go, Oh, good man. You know, a good guy. Yeah. And, and I think that's where that happened. Yeah. I mean, there's, I, there's, pe there's people that think that reality TV is really reality. Yeah. It's like, beautiful. I mean, but also, I mean, you know, I, I think a huge part of why he even got in there was just a pure reaction of being tired of the same shit over and over and over and over again. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, especially, you know. When, I understand that. You know, but I mean, you know, I think the reality yeah. thing. You know, probably I've, I've never seen the show like, in my entire life. I've never seen that show, not one time. You know what I mean? So I don't know. Like, I don't know what he was like. You know what I mean? On that show, I, 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 I would think, assume he's an I asshole. Think got him elected, I think what got him elected was the running joke of, dude, it'd be super funny if like Uncle Tony was president. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, that's what it was. Cause like, I remember people going, like, oh fuck it. like come on he's like i can have a beer with him like you know it's like it's like my uncle but i'm like you don't want him as a fucking president oh dude you know so many times 
That's an accurate statement, John. You, I, I have said many times. I, I, now, I have spent a lot more time than any other liberal I know, <laughs> listening to him speak and like paying attention to what he does. Mm -hmm. And I have said many times, I could go to any fucking Midwest bar on a Monday evening at 6 p.m. and go find a drunk at the bar who has as good and informed an opinion about things as this guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's never said anything articulate or lucid even or enlightening or so, nothing. I've never heard him say anything that demonstrated to me that he has any uh, understanding of how things even work. He has the strangest psychopathology, and he really is a, a disturbed human. He's not, he's not disturbed, oh, yeah. but he's a, you know, he's, he's Leo. And he, he can't, this guy cannot Whoa, speak. For longer, this guy cannot speak for longer than like 20 seconds without either self-aggrandizing him, you know, mm -hmm. about how what a great job he's doing, how great he is, or mm -hmm. insulting and blaming someone else. Yep, right. He will get to one of those two poles yeah. right away. It just, you know, it was really funny. Sorry, you know, it was really funny. I watched today, just randomly, I was on a YouTube, just watching shit on YouTube, and I watched... Obama on Jimmy Kimmel, which was a few days, or maybe I don't know, like it wasn't very long ago, a few days ago. It was he has a book that came out, right? Yeah. And they did this this thing where basically Obama read a segment of his book to a, a unsuspecting person that you know fan that loved him, and and they didn't realize that it was actually him live on the thing, right? So, but in all this happening, I'm I'm listening to Obama read a book. And I, the only thing I, I could think is like I would pay so much money to watch Trump try to read for like one whole page, <laughs> you know what I mean? Just one whole fucking page of yeah. any book, you know, that's yeah. not a children's book. Yeah, it would, <laughs> be, it would it be one going be like, off the rails, you know what I mean? <laughs> It'd be so good. It would be one long running sentence, and he would be like, "There's all these like weird spots and dots and like." Just no marks right here. One page, man. One page of your own book. How's that? I'd love uh, to see it. You know what I mean? And you, it would never I happen. I, it would I never actually, happen. He doesn't even read his own prompter. You know what I mean? Like, no. It's fucking crazy. I downloaded, man. Uh, I downloaded Obama's book today. I was listening to it. Today oh, really? And it, it, it seems pretty fascinating. You know, it, it just, I mean, it yeah, you, it, you know, I it makes you just miss a book. guy that can speak. You know, oh, he's a brilliant dude. Look, he's yeah. he's a brilliant dude. He had his flaws as a politician, but all you know, but he was a brilliant dude. I mean, you know, look, first African American uh, editor of the Harvard Law Review. Um, you know, I, I believe he uh, was. I mean, he definitely graduated magna cum laude. But he um, he um, I mean, he's a brilliant guy. I love him now too because. He's like old Obama. He's like old sage wise yeah, uh, yeah. philosopher. Not but beaten yeah, down seven year old Obama. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Dude, I, I read an, an interview about his book and just listening to him speak, I just thought, like you like what you're talking about, I would love to just compare those two individuals. You know, I had just just speaking about a topic. Oh yeah. Uh, and, I, and for pe people that listen to your show who love Trump, I I don't mean to pick on you. I'm, you speak a language I don't understand. Yeah. If you can listen to this man speak and not laugh, I don't get it. Yeah. Here's the thing. I have worked with so many fucking people that the reason they love him is he speaks like them. And I went, no one wants you in charge. That's why you're not even a fucking foreman they or a leadman or anything to, to do charge. with that because you're an idiot. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, they don't even want to be in charge. It's and, insane. And you, you, did you guys hear Howard Stern too recently? And Howard Stern, he knows Trump for a long time. They're buddies, mm -hmm. right? He said, I don't blame Donald Trump. Donald Trump is doing what he does. I yeah. blame you fucking idiots who elected <laughs> him. Because he yeah. said, all of you people at his rallies he wouldn't let you in the fucking door of his no. home. No, yeah, his, not at all. He, would he wouldn't, doesn't want to be around you. No. He wouldn't. You Trust me. I, I, I was like, like t today I was actually, it was actually a thought that went in my head was like just driving around and like thinking about like people struggling and like how hard, just how hard life is right now. You know what I mean? Like 
life is just hard. You know what I mean? Like, even if it's good for you personally, it's hard, you know? And I was just like cruising around and I'm like, you know, fucking this motherfucker would never understand this. Like, just understand just like the simple thing of just driving down the street and just wondering about how life is going to be hard for the next couple of months, the fucking holidays and just all the shit that we're all dealing with. John, that's 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 true. That, and that's not Trump bashing. It is an no. accurate description of the DSM-3 manual of a narcissist. He, yeah. he has no empathy. Yeah. And he he has I'm, this is a true story and I challenge anybody listening go do this. I I posted something back in the days when I was stupid enough to post shit about politics on Facebook. Um yeah. Unless I learned the hard way, man. Oh boy. Um I said something about him and I I said the danger about Trump and the, the problem that the my personal problem with Trump is not it's not political. It's that this man is almost a pure narcissist. There aren't very many people like this on the planet. Mm -hmm. And he's he's charismatic. He can be charming. And for a while, he might even be able to make things kind of pop. But he can't sustain anything. Uh -oh. and, if, and God forbid a crisis hits. Yeah. Because yeah. they will burn it down yeah. rather than let it reflect poorly on them. Right. Which is exactly what happened with the pandemic. But... Yeah. My buddy, who he's a libertarian guy, he doesn't really like Trump, but he really challenged me. He's like, he's not a narcissist. I said, call me tomorrow. And he did. We spent like 40 minutes on the phone. I got out the, uh, the DSM-5 manual and read him. Like we went down the list of, of uh, symptoms, if you will. Yeah. Or characteristics. characteristics, yeah. Characteristics of a narcissist, and I, I call them symptoms. <clears throat> He, at the end of it, he said, "Yeah, you, you guess you're right. He is. He he has he he exudes every single one. He's not like, hmm, let's see. I wonder if that. No, this guy is a pure narcissist. So John, what you're talking about, you're driving down the street, you're thinking about what this is like for the people. That's called empathy. Yeah, that's an ability to feel <laughs> other people's pain and care about them. This guy doesn't have that. Yeah." No. It's weird, and it's weird. It's weird that it's like a foreign thing to have empathy all of a sudden, you know. <laughs> to be yeah, empathetic, to be like, cool. yeah, to be like, oh man, fucking, ah, oh, you know, just, just, ah, oh, shit, 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 struggling right now. Yeah, like it, it, it is a foreign thought, you know, and I, I wonder how much of it's built on, you know, obviously social media interaction, and you know, you can say whatever mean shit you've ever wanted to say to somebody and not ever have to deal with it face to face. You know what I mean? I think it's yeah. almost yeah, eliminating yeah. empathy out of the, out of the human, uh, I mean, atmosphere, honestly, you know what I mean? It's, it's really weird, you know? Yeah. I would say that's like probably one of the biggest reasons I got off Facebook was just that whole, like, not being like, Oh motherfucker, you would not say this to anybody's fucking face. Mm -hmm. Never. You know what I mean? Just like having that thought, <clears throat> way too many times in my day i was like this is stupid like i'm 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 subjecting myself to this i'm out right later yeah so unhealthy it's so unhealthy for us but but um i i feel like the 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 united states of america is this big banquet table and from day one Old, rich, white dudes have been sitting at the table. Yeah. There's been a few women and a few people of color who've been allowed to come to the table if they behave themselves, right? And then whatever the scraps for the table, wherever they go, well, that's cool, whatever. And I feel like what has happened since the 60s is the door into that banquet room has been pushed open. Right. And, and look, it's inevitable. People of color and women are going to be sitting at that table now. That's oh, yeah. that, it's over. It's game over, right? Oh yeah. Those what we're seeing is the last desperate attempt of all those people putting their shoulder trying to close that door. Yeah. And that's you know that that's what I think we're seeing. Dude, it's funny. Uh, I have a uh, I have a sign. I have a sign in front of my house that says. Uh, you know the Trump train? Yeah. I saw no, that. no, no, no. <laughs> no, we like. Like when the, when the pandemic when the pandemic when the pandemic started, 
I was just like, yo, like I want to, I want to put something out. And I, we, we painted a big sign and it says, don't worry, everything's going to be okay. Right. I'm like, okay, let's put this sign out. And then it's been out there this whole pandemic. People walk by it. They take pictures. I've seen cars pull up, stop, take pictures of it. Like, I'm like, cool. This will be something that I could talk to somebody at the bar one day. I'll be like, hey, I lived at the house that had the fucking, you know, this sign. So a couple of weeks ago, I have a sign in my, I have a sign in the house that says, uh, it's an old protest sign. She says, no KKK, no racist USA. It's a, it's a, it's on a piece of wood. And I was like, oh, I'm going to put it out. I'm going to put it out. Just see, you know, it was like right around the election time. I'm like, let's see, let's see where we get with this, you know? Um, the first, after like four or five days, my, I, I drove by and I was like, wait a minute, the sign's gone. And someone threw it behind the other sign, right? Like to like hide. I'm like, okay, that's weird. Pulled it out, put it back. I just literally had it sitting on a telephone pole, just facing the street. And it's like, just like, everyone can see it. Uh, today, uh, it's completely gone. It oh, lasted really? two and a half. Yeah. And it just says, no KKK, no racist USA. Like, what? what is the, like, you know, what, there, there is no gray area there. So I, I well, I, I think that the three of us could have a conversation and go, um, yeah, there's no gray area, but. But, but. There is gray area. To some people, yeah. Because what, what happened, the, I would imagine, I don't know, obviously, but, but my guess would be that. The people that took that sign down, they're not in the KKK and they love the KKK. No. But they felt like you were calling them a name. Yeah. Because, because they believe something. I have I really struggle to get conservative people to come on my show. They they've done it, a few of them have done it, but I think a lot of people who are and I'm not talking about Republicans or people right. who are conservative, fiscally conservative thinkers. I, I I don't think that way, but but I think that you need people who don't think like you in the world. Like we all need a you know a wealth of ideas. So I'm not talking about Republicans. I'm not, I'm talking about people that are kind of to varying degrees on board with this Trump cult of personality thing. Right. I think that there is some part of them that knows that what they're doing is there's a despicable nature to it, and they don't want to admit it in public. I had a guy who. He's, he's a sharp dude, and but he's super trumped out. And I don't want to you know, make any presumptions about what is going on inside of his mind. But he told me, oh, if I come on your show, <clears throat> I could get fired from my job. Like, what? If you, first of all, like 25 okay. people see my show. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know what yeah. you're talking about. And then secondly, like, what, what, what to, to come on and have a conversation with me about our, how our, I mean, you guys have seen my show. I don't know if you have John, but yeah. I don't have black people. And I don't want, that's the reason I have the show is <laughs> I'm trying to model civil discussion. You know, I, I don't ever, and I, I, and, you know, um, here, I here. really, sorry, what? No, 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 go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. I really believe that he was ashamed to come on there and say that there's there's like you struck a nerve with somebody who feels like you're accusing them of something even though all you're saying is hey you know what the kkk sucks we should yeah. all be able to kind of agree with that right yeah. is that a tough one to get our heads around yeah um, they, they felt accused i think well, you know, the, the real, the hard reality is, is they probably are afraid they're going to go on there and say some ignorant fucking shit that they can't back up, not get back out of, you know what I mean? Like, cause like, you'd be shocked at how many people are like, my grandpa's in the KKK. You're like, what the fuck, dude? You know what I mean? Like, including Donald Trump's, you know what I mean? But um, oh, yeah. I just think there's a lot of that. I mean, when I, I mean, you know, I came on your show last week, you know, cause you were asking for someone conservative and i was like i'm not i'm not at all you know what i mean and i'm not at all but i i saw ben on there so i figured fuck i'd come in but um mm. you know it's got to be it has to and i'm gonna go i'm gonna go way out on a limb right now right and i don't know your age and i don't want to age ism you but honestly dude these fucking boomers are so 
much worse than any millennial I've ever fucking met. And I swear to God, it's like, I was thinking about it the other day because my generate, my family's generation, my, my father, they were too young for Vietnam. Right. And they didn't do, they were too old for the next war. You know what I mean? So that generation of, of dude people <clears throat> Has never, I mean, yes, they've all worked their asses off, and I'm I'm generalizing in a massive way, so bear with me here. But I swear to God, man, this is a boomer. This whole clarion call for making America great and all this shit is is like a reflection of a generation that didn't do shit. They didn't raise their fucking kids. They didn't fuck, you know what I mean? Like, and you know, they didn't fight in wars. Some of them did, maybe, you know, on the tail ends of it or whatever. But like, you're talking about a generation of kids that was raised by uh, vets of World War II, was raised by you know vets of Vietnam, people that had to deal with real fucking problems and real shit. And then people in my parents' generation, your traditional boomers, are people that fucking went wild. You know what I mean? They they partied their asses off and they fucking, you know what I mean? And yes, they went to work every day, but they also never really had to think about anyone but themselves generationally you know when i think back to the people that served in like world war ii the whole entire world shut down to fucking make you know women went to work and all you know all this ended world war one same thing you know what i mean like and those wars weren't that far apart from each other you're talking about maybe a generation or whatever but that was a massive uh, depression in the middle of it anyway you know so it was a, it was 50 years of pure sacrifice until that generation came and then now that generation is dealing with the fact that they didn't make decisions for fucking 20, 30 years. They just kept their head down and worked or they kept their head down and did whatever they did. You know what I mean? But my, kids, my generation, I'm technically like a millennial on the verge of Gen X. You know, it just, it seems like the ones that are so vocal and so offended by the reaction against Trump are the exact generation that like, have never had to think about shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I could be wrong, but it was, this is like my yeah. first real explanation of that. You know what I mean? I, yeah, yeah. you know, I don't, I'm not, and I can't generalize the whole entire fucking generation there, but there's something to be said for, you know, parents, people, my parents age being so vocal and so loud and they were raised to be able to say whatever the fuck they wanted to whoever they wanted to. And they didn't have to think about it. You know what I mean? Well, they're a little delusional about it, too. I mean, like, yeah. And that so goes both I, sides. I, you know what I mean? I got, I know fucking the other guys that are democratically ridiculous. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Look, I said it on my show, Craig. I'm, I'm constantly trying to distance myself from the crazy liberal left. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I consider myself a liberal thinking person, a, a very much a person of liberal. My values are primarily liberal. I, 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 there are a lot of fiscal conservative ideas that I can get behind, but yeah, but the left, like the far left, like yeah, yeah, the, um, and we can get that. That's a whole other conversation. But I feel like I, so I had a guest on my show. The man's name is Kenneth, Kenneth Westbrooks. He's a community activist from Chicago. Really great guy. Really admire him. And um, he he said something on the show that I think is so important. He said. All of these Trump people have this pull yourself up by your bootstraps idea. They're accusing everybody of being socialists, you know, and it's pull yourself up by your bootstraps. And they're they don't understand that no one even has bootstraps anymore. Yeah. You know, like we don't have bootstraps. You, you, how can you tell a kid right now get out there, get an education, and get a good job and buy a home? Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. These things are 5,000 times more expensive than they were when you were a kid. And you don't seem to know that we have let rampant capitalism drive the price of life up mm -hmm. to a point where you you need almost, you need a nanny state or you need complete economic reform for people to be able to survive. Yeah. It's, it's, it's you know what I'm talking about? Ridiculous. It, it's absolutely ridiculous. Like, that like like i mean what you're talking about how capitalism has just pushed the price of everything up and everyone's just like hey guess what i might be able to make that money so mm -hmm. i'm not gonna be against it and it's like motherfucker we are fucking hurting here you right. know what i mean like everyone everyone lets it happen 
for the possibility of it might happen to them. But it's like these motherfuckers don't know how to fucking work. They don't want to fucking put in work and effort into it. You know what I mean? Like, well, can can you can you make your life work in the United States of America by working hard anymore? No. I don't know. I mean, no. it's so. Look, the, the, we we've got all, all of this talk of democratic socialism has a place. It needs to be examined because capitalism has failed us in many areas. Not everywhere. Capitalism is wonderful. You know, if we, we want to pretend that there's a free market out there, great, go for it. But yeah. capitalism has done wonderful things, in, in, but it, it is not an, a, a, a one-size-fits-all across-the-board application that works. App, capitalism in healthcare and education has been disastrous for our country. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking disastrous. Yeah. Hmm. And it's yeah. the and it's the small percent on top that are going like, hey, it's actually pretty great. Yeah. We love it. What's the problem? You know I mean? It's the same thing you described as that open banquet table. You know what I mean? These guys have had to run at fucking everything and they've just let ever whatever scraps have fallen down. You know what I mean? And that's what we're supposed to be fucking happy with. But it's getting to the point where you're right. I mean, a kid goes, you know you get out of the house maybe at 25 maybe after you went to college and maybe now you're a hundred fucking thousand dollars in debt and maybe you're going to get a job at trader joe's you know what i mean <laughs> it's just it's insane but you know it goes back to what i'm saying is like this policy this shit was built on those generations of those people that didn't fucking pay attention to what was happening didn't look up enough to fucking get involved and see what's happening in the world you know what i mean like my, you know, I have family members that just voted for the first time in this election ever in their entire fucking lives. And yes, they're busy working and all this stuff. But, you know, when you're when you when when shit's just good enough and it's it's the perfect, you know, formula, honestly, you know, you, you get just yeah. enough to get by. You know what I mean? And you just keep your head down and keep working and you realize all this shit's slipping by and passing and your freedoms and your rights are slowly being chipped away at it by and the, the hard reality is by Republicans are the only ones chipping away at real like freedoms, you know, the Patriot Act and all this shit that went through, you know what I mean? It's like, it, it, I just don't understand how you don't, it's like, Hey man, welcome to the fucking world you guys created for the last 30 years, dude. You know what I mean? Oh, you don't like it. Well, maybe you should have paid attention 25 fucking years ago. You know what I mean? It just, it makes me, it drives me nuts. It's like, how is my generation getting all the fucking blame when this ship is so massive? It takes 10, 20 years to fucking actually have anything happen. You know what I mean? Like, uh, no, I don't, I wouldn't think that, it get, that I wouldn't feel that the, the, your generation is getting the blame. It's definitely the boomers. I mean, we're in the typical thing where it's the boomers fault right now in 10 years, 15 years, it'll be our fault. Yeah, but you've heard, oh, fucking millennials, you know, blah, 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 entitlements, well, that's, entitlements, that's entitlements. Like, that's, the, that's the same thing of, uh, that's the same mentality of someone saying, like, someone saying, there hasn't been any good music since I was in high school. Right, exactly. But, uh, you know what I mean? but that it's mentality like, built this country over 30, 40, yeah, 50 years. For me, you know? that's, that's true, man. There well, I know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. So, hey, listen, my, my wife has this theory. And I think it's very interesting. She says the baby boomers never gave the reins of the nation to Gen X. Right. They're still, they're still the 78 year old guys are still in charge. Mm -hmm. And like Gen X are still kids. You know, like mm -hmm. the, Gen X needs to step in and say, well, we're going to fucking take over. Get out of here. Get, yeah. get lost. Go retire. Yeah. But we just elected like the have old enough fucking money. We just elected the oldest president ever elected. Yeah. 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 I'm glad we did. Well, yeah. but. And I mean, like, but the thing is, if, if, okay, looking at the election and looking at how everything went down and how basically Biden is a direct rebuke of Trump. Right. I don't think Biden is being elected on any kind of real merit. Or any no. shit like that. Nobody you know what I mean? About Biden. They want to get rid of Trump. Yeah. They're right. like, fuck. Trump. It's the reason you Trump wanted to get got in, because they wanted to get rid of Hillary. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's You're like right. fucking crazy. Yeah. Right, right, anyway, right. continue. So do you think that Bernie Sanders would have stood any kind of a real chance? No. 
No, no I, I've been relieved. Yeah. And, and look, if you would have said to me a year ago, John, you are going to not only donate hundreds of dollars to Joe Biden's campaign, but you're going to get on the phones to help him to, to try to help him win Michigan and, and Wisconsin. I would have said, are you out of your mind? Yeah. He's my least favorite Democratic candidate. Yeah. But, but I but I ended up being relieved because moderate Republicans could swallow a Joe Biden. Exactly. Right? They couldn't swallow Bernie because Bernie's too fucking honest. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Bernie says, hey, I'm a socialist. Like, Bernie, shut the fuck up. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. You know, he has, he can't be bought and paid for like everyone, you know what I mean? And that's why the DNC iced him twice. You know even, what I mean? But it's not even, but it's not even that, it's just, it's just his rhetoric. His rhetoric is what scares the voters. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Bernie? the whole like not being bought or any of that, I don't think most voters give a fuck about it. They care that he calls himself a socialist. The people that, that oppose him, what, he, what, look, look, actually, when Ber I've seen Bernie Sanders go and speak in front of Fox News live audiences and get a standing ovation, mm -hmm. what, what he did by calling himself a socialist was give his enemies fodder to stoke yeah. the fear against him. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because I mean, people, when stupid, you see no. him do an actual interview, he makes a ton of sense. You know what I mean? Well, he was like when he did that hour and a half on Rogan, I was like, this guy's fucking pretty on it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and he was the most popular politician in the United States for years. Yeah. He, Bernie changed politics in the U.S. because he he played he he played on the fucking biggest field and played well. Mm -hmm. Kept up with the big boys. Yeah. On micro loans, yeah. you know, yeah, he wasn't. He'd show that you yeah. can do it if your ideas are popular enough, right? It's just like in the in the end, I think it's one of those things of just there's progress in the fact that he can even be in the ring, as yeah. opposed to 20 years ago, someone like him would not be even fucking. He we we would have never heard about him. I mean, the only one that even got close was Ross Perot, right? And it's he because been, he straight I mean, fought Perot, his way Ross in. Perot was not, Ross Perot was not. I mean, I was I was twelve when that shit was going down. Yeah, but I'm saying as a as a true outsider, you know, un, un, until Trump came in, you know what I mean? Perot yeah, bought his uh, ass into that election, yeah. no problem. It wasn't and built Trump, on policy. You know okay, I mean? look, like like I've talked about this with people. Trump fucked up. Because he could have totally, he could have totally bitch slapped everyone in the fact of like, when coronavirus hit, and just been empathetic, right? And been like, right. oh my god, like, hey guys, look, like, like, I would have been because because I'm a I'm a person that believes every president is a scumbag, you know, <laughs> and I like Obama, I liked Obama, but he's still a fucking scumbag. He's a fucking president. You have to be a fucking scumbag, to you have to be a scumbag. To do the job, kind of. <laughs> To want to be a fucking president like right. it just doesn't make any other sense to me you know so uh and he could have trump could have easily fucking been like yo like this is gonna suck this is gonna fucking suck man we're gonna fucking what we're gonna do is we're gonna fucking guess what I, i'm fucking for the people we're giving we're not giving any fucking corporations any money we're fucking giving all this money to the fucking people small businesses all this other shit he could have done that and they would have fucking they would have let him have a third term Oh so, yeah. So, so John, first of all, I couldn't agree with you more. I, I did I did a closing piece on my show about two months ago saying Republicans should be furious with Trump mm -hmm. because if he if he gets a C plus on coronavirus, he yeah. sails into the White House. Yeah. You guys stay in power for more years. Sails. He this guy but but you're wrong in one place, John. You said he could have. No, he couldn't. He literally he couldn't. Not, yeah, I was just going to say that. Yeah. The man is not capable. Not capable. Not capable of it. You, you're, you're, you know, first of all, I'm envious of how fucking high you are right now. But you are. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you are, you're sitting there as a, a, a person who, look, wh what did you do when the fucking shit hit the fan? You put a nice sign out in your yard. Try to comfort people. Yeah. You're the you are a person who thinks of other people. I that, this man is not capable of that. He not is, capable. He's yeah. not a dick who won't do it. 
He yeah. is incapable of it. Right. It's just insane to like, like, it's just insane to think of someone getting into a job that their job is literally to help people. And he fucking doesn't give a fuck. It's about incapable anybody. of it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Speaking of which, what do you think about the news today of uh, Trump actually relinquishing power and allowing the transfer to happen? Did you read that? Oh, well, that is not what happened. No? So well, the, people, the people that are tell. the Republican committees that are in charge of transition essentially pulled the plug on Trump and said, okay, let's do it. They funded the transition. He's still tweeting, I'm going to keep fighting. Oh, right? no, I saw his half-assed concession, which was – Basically, like, we're going to allow the country to do what it's supposed to do, but this is bullshit, and I'm still fucking fighting it, and I'm pretty sure we're going to win. <laughs> look, yeah. look, guys, yeah. I, I, I'm not trying to be braggadocious here, but I started calling shit about Trump in 2015, oh. and I've been lying about everything. Not because I'm smart. <laughs> hey, you I'm sound crazy. like me. <laughs> he's a predictable, man. He, I know, he's it's a, insane, yeah. He's a predictable animal. Yeah. Guys, I guarantee you, I'll give you each a hundred dollars mm -hmm. if this summer coming up, he's not still out there doing rallies. He's going to continue to go out in front of crowds <laughs> of dopey people and talk about how he got robbed. Mm -hmm. All of this was so he could say, "I fought it tooth and nail, but those corrupt bastards stole it from me." Mm -hmm. And he's going to start his own. New Look, he's in it. Trump wants one thing. Donald Trump, a lot of people think Donald Trump's a racist. He's not. He's not even that sophisticated. He's not sophisticated. Right. If, you were, if you were a fucking illegal alien from Ecuador, but you came in and said, I love Donald Trump, he'd put you on stage with him. He'd give you a job. Mm -hmm. he, doesn't, he doesn't care. I think that he's inherently racist just because he comes from that, that, that class of people who just think, you know, we're wealthy white people and everybody else is on a tier below us. Yes, but he's not motivated by racism. He's motivated. He wants one thing. This. He wants one fucking thing. He wants to stand on a stage and hear the cheering of the people and say, I won. That's what he fucking wants. That's all this guy wants. He's fucking mentally ill. I mean, he's mad, you know? Yeah. No, it's 100%. You know, I... I've been saying it for years. He he would never, ever, ever not wipe the board when he lost. You know what I mean? There was always – and, you know, I always said I, – I said checkers or chess for a long time. He's a guy that wipes the chess board. And then I realized that he wouldn't play chess. It would be checkers. It would be the checkers board, and he would wipe that. You know what I mean? He He's the kid that threw video game remotes. You know what I mean? Like, he just can't he fucking only, do it. You know? only – He'd only play checkers if he had three people standing behind you with mirrors or, you know. Like <laughs> yeah. So, I, it's just so sad. It's, you know, I'm just so glad we don't, you know, after no, uh, you know, January, man. And I've said this, I just, I'm want to forget who the president is for a while. <laughs> I just can't wait to are, check people, out for a minute. People are talking about, you know, him going to jail and stuff. Look, I don't fucking care. Just okay. as long as he goes away. Yeah. I don't care what. Go be happy. Go build shitty hotels. Right. Go do your fucking thing. Just go away. That's all. I mean, and that's like, the thing, too. I don't buy the media fucking empire thing either. Because as soon as he is out and you do realize that, you know, fucking no one's going to give a fuck anymore about that guy. You know what I mean? Like, I just don't. I, I mean, he might build something, but it will be just like everything else he's built on fucking tiny little stilts. For it to collapse when it fucking does, and he runs with money to Mar Largo, you know what yeah. I mean, or the or the Arab Emirates or whatever, you know what I mean? Like it's gonna be a fucking dog shit production, man. You know what yeah. I mean? That's just how it's gonna go. You yeah, know, I think people lost. within a year are gonna want to never hear that guy's fucking name again. You know, there'll always be people that'll want to hear him. Sure, but he'll be less important, but he'll be much less important. He's already. I feel his importance is already is already going away just because of the 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 less amount of uh, like i have less of a i i don't want to check twitter as much right to see what he's doing. yeah yeah because you don't give a fuck. i literally only have twitter to check donald trump yeah like that is yeah. like the only reason that i have fucking twitter if you fucking look at my oh oh here let me see let me see if i can 
Yeah. Let me see if I can show you guys. I don't even follow him, but I check it like daily just to see the chaos coming no, out. I don't of it. follow him either, but I check it. Let me show you yeah, my. Like uh, I said, I just I can't wait to just fucking check out for a minute, dude. You know what I mean? And to get through Corona, and then hopefully play a show one day. But look, look at the look at the only people that I serve here. <laughs> that, that Donald, yeah. Trump, Donald, Donald Trump, Donald Trump Jr., Ivanka, mm-hmm. and Kaylee. Which Those Donald Trump awesome. Jr.'s got Corona right now, anyway, right? So. Oh, and and then I got Eric. Eric's in there. Mm-hmm. And That's I a got gallery of heroes you got there. The doctor from <laughs> Pfizer. The doctor from Pfizer. Pfizer, and then Joe Biden. That right. is literally the only people I've searched yeah. in. Front of. That's wild, man. You know, I'll say this. And I know we're almost out of time, guys. But, but since, since the election got called, Joe Biden has exceeded my expectations. Yeah. Okay. He stayed on point. He yeah. hasn't bought into all the bullshit. The things he said, even the things he said that are critical of Trump have been around trying to get the people to be, you know, safety for our citizens and the coronavirus. And he is, he's shown none of the hubris of a Hillary Clinton. Like he's, he's listening. He's, yeah. he's saying, look, I'm going to, I'm going to be a status quo, moderate Democrat, but I'm going to, you know, select a, a, a diverse staff and, and administration. And so he is, I, I don't think too much of Joe Biden, you know, and but he's exceeded my expectations so far. Uh, Joe Biden is going to be the president that uh, we're only going to hate a normal amount and not an absurd amount. Yeah, I, 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 I just want to hate my president a normal amount. <laughs> yeah. It's a good thing. You know what I love about Biden? Nobody's going to fucking worship him. Like, yeah. you know, Obama yeah. had a little bit of that. Like, oh, it's Obama. He's a, and and. And and Trump is that's that's all he is this cult leader. Yeah. Nobody's gonna do that to Biden. Everybody knows he's a dopey yeah. old guy, and mm-hmm. and we can hold him accountable. We can trash when he fucks up. We can give him props when he does well. Yeah, but it's gonna be another normal president, you know. Yeah, yeah. it's gonna be like yeah, and like I'm I'm just so excited to not hear about so much shit that he says. <laughs> so this will be pro- hopefully our last official real talk about the fucking guy, you know, until the inauguration. <laughs> we don't you know that, I mean, about. okay. So, now that we have a political expert on the podcast, okay. we can get it all out and not fucking, you know. Have you ever been more excited for an inauguration? Um, uh, ask me that question in 10 days because okay. I, I, what I really need right now is I need all those states to certify their their votes okay. and their okay. electoral like so I this... just got this this guy I uh, just I just need to know he's gone today was a big day people yeah because Michigan certified their vote right did, right did and Georgia's you know on the verge of trying to take over the you know what I, I mean thought, I thought trying I to take the last that. couple I seats thought... right yeah yeah but he is going to get a hand he's going to get another audit in georgia they're going to count those votes a third time he has the legal right yeah. as the president says because of a margin uh less than yeah half a percent, he has the legal right to request it he's going to do it he's going to make them count those votes again so georgia's not a sure thing but um i knew i knew we were good when the trump administration <laughs> When the Trump administration, in a 48-hour period, went from promoting this woman, Powell, as a part of their yeah. elite know, team, like completely disavowing her. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. You mean after Giuliani's face melted and he wiped boogers all over his fucking head at a fucking meeting? Oh, my God, the that boogers was, thing. Dude, and, have you seen that? Like, that... Did you did you see that, John? The okay. uh, the Giuliani uh, booger wiping. I didn't see the booger wiping. Let oh me my God. let me Craig, show you Craig, something. Craig, I got it. Know. Hold on. Oh, dude, it, come on, let me see that. Oh, it's one of the greatest things I've ever seen in my entire can you life. Play the video for me. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah I can, we, I can yeah. share my screen. Hold on. I've got a this this I got to film this on my phone. Oh, I'll, on I it's on our thing. It's it's definitely a. Uh, let me get my oh, yeah. let me screen share here. Oh, yeah. It is. It was so. Besides his face melting, right, with the with the hair dye and all that stuff, um, it 
it, it can you see you guys can see the uh instagram yes yeah okay so here you go oh. let me get the sound on here that nobody's wearing masks because you know that shit's imaginary <laughs> yo, yo watch my bands over here <laughs> yo <laughs> takes out the baggy chip blowing his nose takes it booger side in smears his hands all over it wipes oh. it into <laughs> his lips oh <laughs> Son, he's wiping snot all over his face, smearing his hands into it. Looks like shit, bro. <laughs> and he's gonna fucking touch. How insane is that, dude? How insane is that, dude? It's. I mean, it was my. And you know, and it was so hilarious. It's like. You know the memes started coming out after that press conference, right? Of Giuliani's face melting and the boogers, and he went. At, he went to that chick and went, "This is your fucking fault," <laughs> and guaranteed they fucking fire her ass over that. <laughs> you didn't tell me my face was melting on TV. You know, I fucking guarantee that's what happened, dude. Have you guys ever seen Spinal Tap? Oh yes. Him, them <laughs> saying. We're having an exclusive press conference at the Four Seasons. Yeah. And it being a place called Four Seasons Landscaping. Oh, my God. Dude, that was fucking Stonehenge. I know. Real- it was. <laughs> yeah, it was. was it says Stonehenge. right here, 18 inches. Yeah. <laughs> it's like fucking- it says, yeah. what do you mean? It's Four Seasons. It says it right here on the sign. Dude, that, that was fucking hilarious god damn it man i mean it just doesn't you know starting from the borat movie into you know the landscaping company into his face melting into you know what i mean and you're like jesus this guy's gonna kill himself on fucking camera you know what i mean (laughs) me and my friend used to produce live shows in vegas and this is what we when things would go this is this is what we call a monkey shit fight oh okay (laughs) yeah (laughs) When monkeys just start throwing shit at each other and it's all bets are off and there's just poop everywhere. Which yeah. is apparently what was running down his face. You know what I mean? <laughs> it was insane. It's like, how can he take a guy? And then, then when you watch him get questioned about basic fucking procedures and how they're going to, you know what I mean? And he has no idea. And not only that, their main smoking gun was written for the wrong fucking state. Wrong you know what I mean? You're like, the, the- oh my God, dude. <laughs> They filed data about the Michigan malfeasance from Minnesota. It, it was unbelievable. It's, it's so good. It's, it's just, you can't write a better, like, skit. But, you know what I mean? You can't write it better. I, I, than really, that. Like the, I, I really like the, uh, the evidence. Oh, my God. Strong evidence is coming out. Strong evidence is coming out. Like, strong evidence has been coming out for a fucking minute. So, yeah, so... Tucker Carlson of Fox News, yeah, when, when tried to get that woman Powell, Sydney Powell, on his show. Mm-hmm. She wouldn't come on, and she told him to stop calling her. She's like she bitched him out, and he said that on his show. <laughs> and then tonight, Rush Limbaugh said these people said they were going to have this bombshell, and they have nothing. So when Tucker Carlson and, and Rush Limbaugh yeah, right. are complaining <laughs> about the ineff- ineffectiveness of the then yeah, you're done. I mean, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, I also love the, uh, the, have you seen the video of the, of the group chanting, uh, fuck Fox news, Trump supporters. Yeah. No, <laughs> it's like, I'm like, Trump, Trump supporters like, are chanting that. Oh yeah. yeah. No, oh the, my God. Dude, the, the hardcore Trump people are anti Fox now. Yeah. OAN. Yeah. It's, it's OAN it's, now. Cause Fox. Trump, the, the loser, they declared Biden. And so, and then Tucker Carlson's got a bunch of, it's awesome to see. Fox created this monster that has turned on them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's great. I love it. Yeah, when he, I mean, when Trump got COVID, I thought, you know, everyone's like, I hope he fucking dies, blah, blah. I'm like, you know what, man? I hope he lives. I hope he lives. He does well. Long enough to see himself absolutely lose the election and fucking have to leave. And then someone made a perfect meme. It was like, Trump got the full 2020 COVID treatment. You know what I mean? He got... COVID, 
lost, lost his job and now he has now he's getting evicted and you're like oh <laughs> you know it's like fucking perfect man internet always wins man but like it'll be said, uh, it'll be interesting at thanksgiving you know what i mean the family the family fu- the fights are going to be really good you know <laughs> like i said the the people that love this guy you speak a language i do not understand this guy there are 8,000 simple examples how, where you could look at this man and say, this is a childish, pathetic person of no character. And in what fucking delusion does a person like that right. lead a country to greatness? You know? Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know, man. If you've done the research I've done on 4chan, you'd fucking know what's coming, all right? Dude, I, I just think... <laughs> Oh, I just yo, think it goes to show how many shitty bosses are out there in the world that 74 million people think that Trump is doing a good job. <laughs> yeah, it's totally true. Yeah. I've been lucky. I haven't had shitty bosses like that, I guess. I have, and they all seem like the same. You know what I mean? That's why I thought, no, fuck this guy. I work for this guy. I fucking work for this dude. <laughs> Not now, but I have. You know what I mean? Like, holy shit, I work for this fucking guy. It's just crazy, man. Book, yeah. Well, beautiful uh, man. Uh, thanks for coming on. Please plug anything you want to plug. What do you got going on? Well, I just want to, you know, tell people to check out the show. Um, it's w. If you go to www.facebook.com/slash/common-ground-vlog. Mm-hmm. Okay. Vlog. 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 Like yeah. it sounds it sounds a, very Russian. Like the page, and if you happen to be listening to this and you're conservative, please come on my show. And yeah. Have a conversation with me. I promise. Yeah. I'll be like, yeah. You know what you got to do? You got to join Parlor. Start start live streaming on Parlor. <laughs> that is you do really happen. well there. <laughs> that is not going to happen. What if we? Oh my gosh! Like, what if we like? Okay, check this out. Mm-hmm. What if we like produced like a satirical red right wing fucking uh, like podcast, mm-hmm. and we only put it on. On the, there you go. I would love to do that. I yeah. would love to. My, my brother. And my friend, do you know Dave Gertzman? I don't know if I know Dave. I, oh, I'm gonna out him now. But Dave and my brother both have fake parlor. Accounts. Oh, oh, really? Okay, nice. His name is Pat Riot on okay. the parlor. When you look at it, it says Patriot. It's awesome. <laughs> of course, Pat Riot. Right. He's got the fucking flags and the goofy yeah. hat and all that shit. Uh, so, so are mean, you saying that Korg went right wing? Is that what you're telling me? So oh, come so. on, never. <laughs> hey. Yeah. I mean, I've heard him say some crazy shit at parties, so it's fucking. He's right in there. You know what I mean? <laughs> wow. Yeah. We all knew Korg was gonna get behind grabbing by the pussy. Come on. That's right, man. You know he would. Yeah. Beautiful, man. All right, anything else going on? Common Ground, you got, uh, obviously, Song Division there. You know what I mean? Whatever, anything else you want to plug? That's another conversation from another time. No, uh, thanks for having me on, guys. I appreciate it. It was fun. Thanks for coming out, bro. All right, gentlemen. It was a lot of fun. It was good to see you. Thanks, man. Anytime. We'll talk to you. Uh, Good night, guys. Later.